Hello friends, in this video we will be talking about the very first step of glycolysis and also uh, uh, I'll be focusing on the enzyme in this case which is called the hexokinase and the role of hexokinase which is a very very interesting enzyme here. Okay, so let me take uh, a color, so the smart tools, okay, yep, okay, fine. Now, <coughs> uh, in the very first step of glycolysis what we are having as our substrate is glucose and we need to convert this glucose into something else which can e elaborately start the glycolysis process and that state is called glucose 6-phosphate so what we do in this case we, uh, we take uh, the phosphate from ATP and attach this one phosphate into this glucose and produce glucose 6-phosphate so as the name suggests glucose 6-phosphate that means we have to take phosphate from the ATP and it attach this phosphate onto the 6th carbon position of a uh, the glucose and it produce the glucose 6-phosphate okay and the enzyme which is responsible for this step is called the hexokinase now the enzyme hexokinase is a very very interesting one and in this case hexokinase need the presence of magnesium ion for its catalysis and magnesium ion is helping them to establish this particular function now uh, right after the production of glucose 6-phosphate there has been no going back so I'm, I'm repeating my phrase that uh, when we have glucose then it's fine we can store them into glycogen we can also store them throughout the process of uh, Krebs cycle and produce triacylglycerol and store them in adipose tissues but once you produce this glucose 6-phosphate there will be no going back because this glucose 6-phosphate is energetic and this glucose 6-phosphate is destined to go throughout this glycolysis stages right so so be careful about our source for all the cells are very very careful about producing uh, this glucose 6-phosphate from glucose because this is a very very important step which tells you that now glycolysis must start okay so this process uh, del G negative uh, del G value is also very very negative so it's very good uh, so it's very fine to do this because we are utilizing ATP here so it's no problem about that okay but the most important thing about all I must talk about is hexokinase now enzyme hexokinase are uh, there are different types of hexokinase there are four different types of hexokinase are found here all of them are called isomers of e each other okay and Hexokinase 1 is found vigorously inside liver's uh, liver, okay, and hexokinase 4 is a different one. It, it, we can find them in uh, different tissues, uh, not uh, not uh, usually in liver. So this hexokinase 4 is also called the glucokinase, but hexokinase 1 is simply the hexokinase, okay. Now, uh, one thing you can uh, very, very importantly observe through this graph that these two enzymes, hexokinase 1 and hexokinase 4, are working in different manner because looking at their graphs. Because hexokinase 1, as we are seeing here, we can see this hexokinase 1 concentration is uh, is in a balance, uh, is in a constitutive way. So it's a constitutive secretion of hexokinase 1. So it is produced and is secreted in the constitutive amount, in the constitutive way. So uh, all the time, hexokinase 1 concentration is placed in, in a particular level. But hexokinase 4 concentration is varying time to time so we are having a sigmoidal curve and remember the sigmoidal curve of the enzyme that means in those enzymes can only show the sigmoidal curve which are controlled or regulated by a uh, allosteric regulation now here we are having the allosteric regulation of exokinase for our glucokinase we can see here in this case so let us look at uh, this schematic presentation we can find it uh, that why this exokinase 4 is important and why this exokinase 4 is uh, different than exokinase 1 now exokinase 1 what exokinase 1 can do all the time exokinase 1 is present inside the cell in inside the cytoplasm of the cell now what we'll do it will take glucose here and it will convert the glucose into uh, glucose 6 phosphate so this part these things can also uh, done all the time because of uh, the presence of hexokinase 1 but hexokinase 4 all the time all the time hexokinase 4 is not destined to do this hexokinase 4 can sense the situation it can sense uh, what what is need to be done and then only it take its decision and do the job now here what we are seeing we are having a lot of glucose inside our blood capillary now the glucose can come throughout the receptor or transporter of glucose which is called GLUT2 or GLUT4 now this throughout the GLUT2 uh, transporter glucose enters into the cytosol of the cell 
now then glucose uh, is converted into glucose is phosphate for for this kind of conversion we need either glu hexokinase 4 1 or hexokinase 4 now here if we will see the effect of hexokinase 4 so if hexokinase 4 present uh, uh, on its own then glucose ca can be converted into glucose 6 phosphate we must need the presence of ATP because we need to take this phosphate uh, from ATP and attach them into glucose uh, 6 carbon position right but uh, hexokinase 4 is produced here inside the nucleus but when inside the nucleus hexokinase 4 is bound with a regulatory protein uh, which is attached to the hexokinase 4 at its allosteric site uh, so so uh, it's not allosteric site or it's a regulatory site anyways so hexokinase 4 is having a regulatory site in those regulatory sites this regulatory protein is bound and as a result of the bounding binding of regulatory protein hexokinase 4 is having a higher uh, uh, molecular weight or it's having a higher uh, structure so it can not pass through the nuclear pore and come into the cytoplasm okay so that's very very logical so no problem about that so it's a long it's a large protein so it cannot enter the cytosol but once the regulatory protein leave uh, uh, leave out uh, this hexokinase it activates hexokinase in two different ways first thing is that it allows hexokinase 4 to enter into the cytosol because of the uh, less weight and less uh, structure uh, or, or less size sorry uh, and the second thing is that it activates the active site of the hexokinase 4 by leaving uh, the regulatory site of it okay so the hexokinase 4 enters into the cell and hexokinase 4 can uh, go through the process of uh, first step of glycolysis and then transfer the phosphate from ATP into the glucose 6 carbon position and produce glucose 6 phosphate but remember one thing very carefully here again if we are having a lot of glucose if we are having a lot of fructose 6 phosphate which is, uh, which is the further intermediate product of uh, of glucose 6 phosphate now these things can trigger uh, the uptake of hexokinase because when there are a lot of glucose inside our cytosol that, that suggests us that we must uh, de degrade those glucose, we must take out energy from those glucose with the help of glycolysis and we must produce acetylchloride through the process of glycolysis and for that it needs to signal hexokinase that come, hexokinase must come and go through the process of glycolysis or the first step of glycolysis so so for that uh, we need to uh, remove this regulatory protein and take up only hexokinase 4 and they can take it by uh, the signaling of glucose and fructose 6 phosphate so glucose signifies that there are a lot of glucose and so we need hexokinase 4 to take this uh, glucose into glucose 6 phosphate that's why glucose will come and help uh, this hexokinase 4 to, to, to leave this regulatory protein and then only hexokinase 4 can enter and it, it will ca carry on all these processes okay so this is how hexokinase 4 is controlled and regulated and I hope it will help you thank you